Rub up your engines! All right, everybody knows I'm not a Korean car, Hyundai, Kia fan. The guy didn't buy it, though. He's a smart man. He's had this Tucson for a little over a year and a half now and realized he's leasing it because he was going to get a Toyota RAV4. But there were two things that bothered him. The first was this Tucson has a nice screen integrated with the dash where the Toyota had that one that looks like somebody stuck an iPad there and he hated it. And the other thing he hated was the price. He's leasing this. 210 bucks a month. The RAV4s, they were 350 bucks a month and up and you're not going to believe this but it's the truth this was a new model that just came out the saleswoman at the hyundai dealer told him no don't buy this car lease it she said it's a new model things might go wrong you won't have to worry about anything because you're leasing and if you like it later you can always pay off the lease and he's got another year and a half left on the lease and he just told me, ah, he doesn't know, he'll probably get rid of it and get something else. As a compromised vehicle, mainly because of the price, and he really hated that iPad looking thing in a Toyota, I tend to agree. It's intrusive to the design of the car, and it's kind of annoying that you got this bump sticking up there. I gotta agree with him that, but considering that he gets 39 miles a gallon on the highway when he was driving at regular speeds, good gas mileage, he didn't have to worry about the repairs because he doesn't own it. He's leasing it. Black and silver interior. We'll start it up. It's got cool looking digital dashes, I'll say that. Got a nice display. The sunroof. Collision avoidance system. Air conditioned seats. Different speeds. Heated seats. Different speeds. Both sides. Easy to get to. Listen, anytime you want to look back, just push your back camera. There's a the view. You don't have to be in reverse. Sandy little thing. I even like the cool rolling volume for the radio. Look at it. Really easy to use. And when you turn the thing off, watch. Happy music. Now when you consider he's only paying 210 bucks a month to lease it. Hey, nice looking vehicle. It's got a lot of room for the back seat. Has heating and air conditioning in the back seat. It's comfy back here. You can easily get three people in there. Or have a nice armrest with cup holders. Now, this is a two-wheel drive version, but he follows my videos. He lives on the East Coast. You put snow tires on the front of this thing, he doesn't get stuck anywhere. If you do get an all-wheel drive vehicle and one tire goes bad, you gotta buy all four. That's a lot of money every time you get a flat tire. The all-wheel drive systems, all the tires have to be almost exactly the same size because if they're different, then that messes with the computer systems. They're all run by computers. It ends up burning out the transfer cases. It can wreck differentials. They want to have them all the same size. So if you really want to take care of your vehicle and you have an all wheel drive vehicle, every time a tire goes out, boomo, you got to buy four of them and they have to be the same exact tires too. And generally with the way that four wheel drive vehicles are set up, the tires are very expensive tires. I had a guy the other day bring one, it cost him a thousand bucks every time he's got to swap the tires out. Think about that. Do you need to have a four wheel drive vehicle? Hey, this is the East Coast, right? It snows. He has no problems with snow tires on this thing. It works perfectly fine. You pay less for it and you're going to get better gas mileage because the four wheel drive systems, every single one of them gets worse gas mileage because of the weight, the extra drive wheels. The only vehicle that goes further with four wheel drive are the fancy Teslas that have a motor on each wheel. But that's electric motors run by computers. It's a completely different thing than a gasoline version all wheel drive vehicle. So let's look under the hood. It's a 2.5 liter four cylinder. GDI engine. It's got 181 horsepower, which isn't too bad. Not turbocharged, which is good. So you got a 2.5 liter engine, which has a big enough size engine. It's not a little bit of tiny 1.4 or 1.1 liter three cylinder turbo. It's big enough. 2.5 liters is a decent sized engine and it's hooked up to an eight speed transmission. Now the man may be very lucky, but we don't know yet because you never know how they expand it. But Hyundai is just recalling a bunch of these eight speed automatic transmissions for an electric pump that doesn't work right. It charts out. It doesn't go anywhere. But if you look at the list here, it's got Santa Fe, Sonata, Velostar, Elantra, Kona, and Santa Cruz, but it does not have the Tucson. They didn't recall this one, so maybe this one is slightly different. I don't know. All I know is they're recalling some of those, but on the other hand, the man was smart. 
because he leases this thing. He doesn't own it. If the transmission did go out, it's not on his watch. They would have to fix it under warranty anyway. Don't buy it, she said, and she was a saleswoman. Lease it in case there's a problem. So he doesn't have to worry. But say you're gonna buy a used one, get the VIN number of the car. The easiest one's right in the windshield right there. And you go to the National Highway Traffic Safety Association .gov website, and you just type in the VIN number. And if there's a recall, it pops up. And if it says, well, they're recalling for the transmission, you say, well, I'm not gonna buy that one used. Buy something else, right? That's one advantage of leasing it with things the way they are today. 210 bucks a month is actually a really good deal that he got for this. Like I say, he wanted the RAV4. He didn't like the ugly screen, but he also didn't like the 350 bucks plus. You know, that's almost twice the 210 he's paying. So you really can't argue with that. You see, his engine compartment is dirty, but he doesn't care. He listens to me. Don't put water in cleaner. You can ruin the electronics. You don't live under there that picnic, so who cares? And it does have a dual system. It has GDI injectors, and it also has port injectors. We'll pull off the stupid beauty cover. You can see it has both kinds of injectors. There's the regular fuel injectors here. You can't see the GDIs. They're hidden inside. So it's not an engine. You got to worry about carbon buildup on the intake valves. It's got a system to solve that. You know, there's a lot of technology in it, especially in that eight-speed automatic transmission. That's how he actually gets better gas mileage then it's rated at low highway speeds. But it also gets in the teens when you're in town, because understand one thing about just about every SUV out there. They're relatively high up in the air. They're relatively non-aerodynamic. So they're always gonna be pretty much gas hogs when you're driving in town, because you're stopping and going, stopping and going. And like all modern cars, it's LED, and it's got a beautiful front, I mean. It's an impressive lighting system. So let's take it for a spin. And the owner just told me, he thinks it's maybe a little crappy car, but he really likes the way it looks. It's got a nice look. Now, he never uses the manual shifting. He just puts it in drive and drives it. First thing I notice is it's incredibly quiet in this thing. It's, it's not loud at all. That's just the wipers going up and down because it's raining. It went over the hump pretty good. And I got to say, it's pretty comfortable to drive around it. Realize sometimes in an insane car market like the one that exists today, where people are paying more for used cars than new cars, sometimes a lease like this is not that bad of an idea because you can play it by ear. And believe me, if a year and a half from now, the big recession is going full swing and he decides he's gonna buy it, he'll probably get a pretty good buyout price on it at least because they'll be stuck with tons of them and they won't know what to do with them. It does have the automatic shut off and the owner just said he hates it and so do I. <laughs> it's so annoying, you know? It really is, it's just annoying. There's something annoying about it. And here we go. Hey, this thing's got plenty of get up and go. Considering it's not turbocharged, hey, it's got a lot of oomph to it. And you can see it's got all the automatic lane departure stuff. And really, hey, it's slippery out here. This thing handles the corner. There's no slippage at all. It's a nice handle little vehicle. Now, he was telling me he shuts off the automatic shut off sometimes. And what should he do? So I told him, shut it off all the time. You got to do it after you start the car because it's automatically on. 90-something percent of the wear of your car is, guess what, when you start the car. They claim they have better bearings, rings, you name it, but it's baloney. All the vehicles that have stop-start system, I see the engines wear and they end up burning oil too early. You got a system like that, my advice is just turn it off. So there we have it, a new Hyundai Tucson. And as the guy says, Eh, it's kind of crappy, but I like the way it looks. I like the features it has, and he's leasing it for only $210 a month. The Toyota that he wanted was $350 up per month. A lot of difference. Maybe he'll keep it. Maybe he won't keep it. But at that price point for what he got. Now, of course, what I'm wondering, as I showed you earlier, is that eight-speed automatic transmission is being recalled on a bunch of them. It didn't include the Tucson yet, so maybe that'll have a problem, but he doesn't have to worry about it because he's leasing it. As everybody knows, I'm not really a big fan of leasing, but in this case, I am a big fan of leasing. With these insane car prices, if you can get a low enough lease like that on a car that you don't know, is it going to last, is it not going to last, it's not that bad of an idea. And as I also said, let's say you really like it. This recession's obviously on its way. When it's time to buy it off lease, if nobody's buying cars because there's a recession, they don't want it back. They'll give you a really good deal. Only time will tell that, but as it stands now, 210 bucks a month, he's happy with it. And I would, it's a fun car to drive. He's worried that it says, now this might not last two, 300,000 miles like a Toyota. And I said, 
Probably not, but for $210 a month, he gets to try it out. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.